Hello and welcome to Program Mechanics, the QT series. QT is an application developed by Nokia, which you can use to create your very own programs and cell phone applications. Now, tonight's going to be all about creating a simple program that can calculate the factorial function of a number. This using only a few of QT elements and a couple of C++ code. Take into account, this is only for beginners. If you're an advanced QT or C++ user, this is not for you. Now that being said, let's get on with it. This should be your final result. An input device, a button and an output device. The user should pick any number here, let's say 5 is calculate. And after he clicks OK, the factorial of 5 should pop right here. OK, 120. That's perfect. That's what we want. So we can say that program runs. Now, let's get on by creating the actual program. Let me close all current projects and open a new one, new file or project. Qt C++ project and UI application is what we want. Choose. I'm going to name it YouTube. Next. Next. Finish. Yes, I'm going to overwrite it. Finish. There we go. Fourth thing you see. Your user interface. This is where all your buttons, labels, input and output goes. We're going to start with our button. Any size, any place you want. And there we go. Big button. Nice and shiny. If you double click it, you can change the text. I always use OK. Seems like a natural thing to do. Now, for our input device, since we're going to be using the factorial function, only uses round numbers. A spin box is good enough. Um, for an output device, a label. A label can show either text or numbers. So we're going to double click it again and change the text to your result here. That's good enough. Place it a bit nicer. Alright. First thing you should see. First thing you should see when you click on an object. You should go to the bottom right corner and see all its properties. Now, this is very important for you to get familiar with. For example, the spin box, it has a minimum. It, you could be able to you know, go minus 55, but we don't want that. That It's not useful for the factorial function. Maximum could be 5,000, 5. Let's go with 100. That's good enough up here you have the name all your objects have a name now this is a simple program but when you have a big program that has a ton of buttons and labels and inputs you should remember the name of each I'm just going to change one name label I'm going to call it output now let's call it result result and that's it now what do we want from this program? We want that after the user inputs a value and he clicks the button, the result will show here in the label. How do we do that? We're going to right click our button, select go to slot, and here are the possible actions for that button. Click when press, when release, destroy anything we want. I like release. So we're going to say OK and start writing our code. Always, when you start the code, start declaring a ton of variables. I'm going to use an int, should be good enough for a factorial, right? Call it x. Now, if you're not that familiar with the size of variables and how to call them or describe them or, you know, declare all variables, you should definitely go to c++.com. I'm going to leave a link in the description. It's a great website. It has a ton of tutorials, step by step, shows you the code. It's quite useful. Now let's go. The main thing of this tutorial. How do we make our variable x equal the value that the user inputs? Okay, remember this. UI slash greater than. This is going to show all your objects on the UI we're going to select the spin box which is our input device the spin box itself has a ton of properties 
which again call uh, you can call them by saying dash greater than now look at all this there's a ton of possibilities but the one we want is the value of it so right bar it go itself enter value that's it with this command x is going to equal whatever value the user puts in the spin box now onto the factorial calculation it's simple enough and uh, not difficult a cycle small cycle four cycle we're going to be using two other variables i and j uh, j is going to equal one initially and cycle is going to say i equals one until i while i is smaller than or equal than x it's going to increase by one for every cycle and the actual command is going to be j equals j i times now let's check this calculation j starts off as one same as i oh sorry so yeah there you go one times one equals one i increases by one i equals two two times one is two i increases by one again uh two times three is going to be six and so forth and so on until it reaches the value of x once it reaches the value of x it's going to stop and that value will be the factorial of x now in your mind you calculate factorial saying let's say factorial 5 all right you say 5 times 4 that's 20 then 3 times that's uh, 60 and so forth and so on with any number a program is going to do the exact opposite it's going to start at 1 and grow its way until your value why it's just easy this way it's faster I like it so now that j, j is going to be your final result it's going to be the factorial of x how do we show that? with an output that in our ui again ui dash greater than remember what we call our label we call it result that's the way it's going to show here it's not going to say label it's going to show the name you gave it so please do remember the names of all your objects it's going to have properties again label has a ton of properties by itself we can this is the one we want set num if you want text you can say set text but we want a number so set num between these parentheses you're going to put j the value of j which is the result and that should work so let's try and run this program you save all every time you run it you wait till it builds up. My computer's kind of slow right now. So just bear with me for a few more seconds. There we go. This should run factorial 5. 120. That's good, right? Now, a thing uh, about programs is that you should always check them with a powerful calculator. Why? Let me tell you why. Let's say that I try factorial 12. 479 million I check it with my calculator and it's right but now let's go for factorial 13 1.9 billion that is wrong it's completely and utterly wrong the factorial for 13 is actually 6 billion now why do I have this mistake it's because of variable types int only grows until 2 billion if it's a signed variable or up to 4 billion if it's an unsigned variable but factorial grows so fast it's so greedy it wants more every time you give it a little bit it wants more it's like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates so all we have to do is change our value to a double that's a bigger type of variable it can hold out for bigger size for bigger values now it should work now with this type of variable 
it should run properly on the try it out all right 12 again 479 million that's in there we go 6.22 billion that's the actual value and it can grow fast 25 that's an actual value 32 that's correct to check it we have successfully created our factorial calculating program let's go back here for a while if you have a bigger program you're gonna have to do this stupid cycle over and over again every time you want to calculate a factorial for number and that's just you know it takes up a lot of time writing this over and over again even if you copy paste it so what we want to do is we want to create a function and then call it every time we need it we want to be able to say this factorial of x and we want that to be calculated how do we do this all right i'll show you how we go to the very top of our code before anything showing even the main window we declare the function how do we do this again we declare the value of the function a double we then name it we want to say factorial then we put the va the input value of this function it's going to be a double again and we name it n or x or k whatever you want I'm going to use n we use the curly brackets and we start with it again two doubles i and j j equals one same for cycle i equals one lower than n oh, sorry about that yeah i plus plus and then j equals j times i and that's it that's wrong right wrong because this is a function we needed to return a value so how do we do it, it can not return anything you set select return void and it won't do it wouldn't it won't send back a value but we want it to we want it to send back j the result now this should be right all this so we can go down and we can safely say we don't need this cycle we don't need these variables we can make a program shorter and faster which is what you want when you program so x is going to equal the factorial of x which is oh remember uh, variables are case sensitive this is not the same than this they are two completely different variables so let's go by it's going to equal the factorial of x we're going to call our function with the x value and our new number is going to be x our only variable I'm going to run this again save all again and try it out now with well these charges I do want to say apologize for my English it's not my native language I'm actually trying to practice with these small tutorials. Now let's try again. 12. That's it. 13. Perfect. 25. 28. 38. And so on and so forth. This program is a proper program that we created in less than 10 minutes. So we can say QT is quite useful and easy to learn. Just got to, you know pick up your C++ Qt is all in C++ it's not in Java or Visual Basic or anything just C++ now I hope you enjoy this hope it was useful to you and come back for my other videos thank you so much for watching and good night everyone